Okay, well hello everybody and welcome to o Open Access Week. Today we are continuing our week of sessions on open access issues and opportunities with a presentation from the president of Athabasca University, Dr. Fritz Panikuk. Before we get underway, I'd like to just take a moment to remind everyone of the sessions that will be taking place this week. And uh, as you can see, on uh, Monday, we had Terry Anderson talking about the Open Access Scholar. Tuesday, we had Patrick McAndrew here from the UK Open University talking about open access research opportunities and strategies. And of course, today we have uh, Dr. Panikuk. Tomorrow we have uh, Steve Schaefer, Tony Tin, and Colin Elliott speaking on open access archives and repositories. Specifically, I believe they'll be uh, addressing AU space. And finally, on Friday, we have Dr. Rory McGreal talking to us about open educational resources. Now, uh, the recording and PowerPoint slides for today's presentation and all of the presentations this week are being archived on AU Space, which is Athabasca University's own uh, open access repository. So if you were unable to attend one of the previous sessions, you can still access the Illuminate recording, the audio recording, or the PowerPoint slides from the open access website by clicking on archived webcasts. And I'm going to just, uh, I've got the uh, link to the open access website there on the slide, but I will put it in your text box so that uh, you can use that. There we go. Now during the presentation, there will be opportunities for questions and comments, and we invite you at that time to use the microphone in Illuminate by clicking on the microphone icon in the bottom left corner of your screen. Please remember to click on it again when you're done speaking in order to free it up for someone else. You can also let us know uh, that you're waiting to speak by clicking on the hands up icon in the bottom left corner of the participant box, and that's the little hand with the green up arrow. If you don't have audio capabilities today, you can also text questions and comments in the text box, and uh, I'll try to stay on top of those and bring those to Dr. Panikuk's attention uh, at the end of the session. Finally, uh, at the end of the session, we'll be doing a draw for an open access t-shirt, so don't leave too quickly at the end. Now, I'd like to introduce our presenter today, Dr. Fritz Panikuk. Prior to joining Athabasca University in an executive capacity, Dr. Panikuk had been the Director of Information Resources at the University of Calgary with academic appointments in the Faculty of Communications and Culture and in the Department of History. As the Director of Information Resources, he was directly responsible for the University Library and its five branch libraries, the University Archives, the University Press, and the Nickel Arts Museum. He's also been the chair of the Alberta Library, which is a consortium of more than 300 libraries, and the Health Knowledge Network, which is a health information collective. In June of 2005, Dr. Panikuk was appointed president of Athabasca University. Then in February of 2008, at the International Council for Open and Distance Education meeting in Oslo, he was elected president of ICDE. Dr. Panikuk is recognized nationally for his leadership in the creation of digital resources, digital communication, and the transformation of academic publishing. He's been involved in the development of the Information Commons at the University of Calgary, and today he will be discussing some of the work being done at Athabasca University Press, which is Canada's first open access press. And on that note, I will turn over the mic to you, Dr. Panikuk, and uh, sit back and enjoy your presentation. Well, thank you very much for that very kind uh, introduction. Yesterday, I had the privilege of uh, being one of the speakers at the uh, University of British Columbia's Open uh, Access uh, Week, talking about the press, but really talking about the open access movement in general. I think what I'd like to do is generally talk about the open access movement and where the press fits into it, then what are the issues surrounding an open access press. Well, the statements that I, I always like to make now is uh, one that came out of the World Conference in Higher Education. 
That is, there are 6.5 billion people in this globe, all, all engaged in lifelong learning of one kind or another. And if you really want to be frightened, there are 2 billion of them, apparently, are teenagers, all moving into a learning mode at the, you know, sort of the peak of the post-secondary. Uh, uh, and so what does this all mean? Well, it should frighten all of us. What it, there's 150 million spots for post-secondary learners around the world. The penetration rate for an average industrial society is recommended to be about 40 percent. So we need about 800 million places and we have about 150 million places. We have a problem. The only way you can sort out that problem, I believe, is not by replicating uh, residential institutions. If you wanted to replicate, for example, uh, one UBC every day for the next decade, you still couldn't uh, achieve the kind of uh, learning outcomes that the globe needs. The only way you can do it is through open access. And the only way you can get the information out to learners is, again, through open access uh, publishing. Now, I always ask myself, what was the origin of open access uh, itself? Well, unfortunately, you'd think it was rooted in the pursuit of knowledge, the desire for innovation, the desire to see knowledge distributed as widely as possible. Well, we'd all be wrong. Its origins were really in the journal's crisis, and it was the increasing costs, like 40, 50, 60, 70, 100 percent per year, that drove us to move to open access. So it wasn't our, you know, some altruistic motive. It was the fact that we were interested in saving money. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. However, if you look at the motives for a place like Athabasca University and the motives for Athabasca University Press, it really is in pursuit of removal all barriers to lifelong learning. And that is to get the information to the general public and to the you know, a general community who really uh, have invested heavily into uh, the knowledge economy and into universities through their taxes and whatever have you. There's another reason why I feel so passionate about open access publishing. And it's because I believe the current publishing system in Canada is broken. So let's look at some numbers. We have around, oh, I'd say 10, 12,000. I may be out by a few thousand social scientists and humanists in Canada at the colleges and universities. Yet the publishing output in this country in the terms of monographs is around 500 a year from scholarly presses. Now somebody might sit down, if I were a funder of a university, and sing, are all those stories true about what academics are doing with their lives? Uh, you know, where's the production? Well, some people would say, well, you know, since you only spend 30 percent of your time doing research and, you know, that takes time, you can't expect much of a production. But even if you start really culling down uh, as to how much time goes into this, you'd come down that there should be three to four to five times as much scholarly output in a year uh, from at, at least two major discipline areas. Is it the scholars that are the problem or is it the publishing system that is the problem? I've come to the conclusion that the manuscripts exist, that scholars are active, the scholars are really quite active, uh, and whether it was at the University of Calgary Press or at AU Press, there is no shortage of outstanding manuscripts, absolutely outstanding work uh, by scholars that should get out there. And I look at uh, a small book, for example, the, uh, the, the, the volume on prostate cancer and its treatment. That one's become a bestseller. Or the uh, first book we did, The Importance of Being Monogamous, which again became an international bestseller. Or the book on Head Smashed and Buffalo Jump, which is doing extraordinarily well. And then uh, the number of manuscripts that are coming to us as a small press, again, there's no shortage of outstanding, uh, outstanding work. So what is really 